So I'm here with Hetro Tolson. I don't know if I pronounce the name good. Uh, Hetro Artsen. Hetro Artsen. I try. <laughs> so uh, you open uh, the stage at the Elfest this morning. How was the show? How was the feelings of that? Uh, the show was absolutely spectacular. Um, it was a little stressful morning, but everything went smoothly and we had a great time playing. Yeah. We, we've been preparing so much for... Um, uh, we've been preparing so much for, for this gig, because it's sort of like a culmination of uh, the last uh, one and a half year since uh, Kalfsil joined. And uh, just made uh, the, uh, the, how do you say, quartet <laughs> uh, quite complete in a way, I, I think. Uh, so, uh, like I said, this was the, the culmination of all that and uh, it just went perfect, I think. Yeah, this, uh, this show was a huge step for us um, as a band. We never play in such a big festival mm. with such organization, so that means a lot for us. Okay. Yes. I don't really know what to add because uh, they already said everything. It was the first time in a, such a huge event like uh, Hellfest. So uh, I'm a bit uh, proud to be here, uh, very happy. And considering the fact that we played that early, it went uh, quite well. Uh, there is uh, morning persons and there is uh, me who was uh, still waking up when playing but uh, uh, it uh, was fun this is your first time in France no no we we have played uh, many times around France during since uh, 2015 I think okay but first time in Hellfest for us I hope you will come back. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Uh, your last album, Sorry. Phosphorus, Volume 1, was released last year. Uh, what was the feedbacks about it? And are you currently working on something, the Volume 2? We are, yes. We, are work we will focus on Phosphorus, Volume 2, after this show, because we have a few months without live uh, shows for us. So. We will focus in uh, finishing the volume two, and there is a lot to do, of course. But uh, we have uh, many ideas, and yeah. Good. And about fo I think you ask about the phosphorus one, the reception of yes. phosphorus one. Yeah, it got a lot of promotion, and I I I actually like to read what about I'm very interested in reading what it says about the album so I was collecting all all reviews that that were appearing and it was very few that didn't like the album but the a huge percentage was very positive so that felt very nice very good and we have learned a lot from from that album a lot during this year, so that will surely help making the, the second one a lot, I think. Um. Well, as uh, she says, it's a continue, uh, continuing uh, develop, developing process. Uh, we are renewing ourselves and uh, getting better um, at uh, songwriting and stuff. It's uh, clear that uh, our previous albums got uh, some kind of uh, things, details that we we should never call uh, us uh, in perfection. But uh, you you can always learn from the past and uh, the stuff you have done before. So uh, it doesn't matter how how things uh, were made in in that time because uh, what is matter what it matters the, the most is the the energy we focused upon it uh, those works but now uh, we are continuing experimenting new stuff perhaps in the future we will say ah oh, there is a lot of uh, details in phosphorus 2 as well but uh, 
uh, the learning process is uh, is continuous is uh, long uh, you you cannot get better if you never learn okay uh, what is the main lyrical theme for your last album phosphorus where is about is about uh, Illumination, since uh, phosphorus means uh, the light bearer, and uh, our text is strongly related with uh, Gnosticism and uh, mysticism. We are not just trying to uh, invoke the, all the devils in uh, the realms of hell. Uh, we are trying to uh, represent the the, the the unknowable light, the the invisible light, upon this uh, realm. And using black metal as a weapon to uh, to show this uh, to the ones uh, who, who has uh, eyes to see and ears to hear. Um, what is the difference uh, between uh, the scene you come from Chile and the scene of Sweden? Uh, there is a kind of uh, of a huge difference. Uh, there is a good scene in 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 Chile, but uh, the thing is that uh, the support for the musicians is uh, quite poor. Uh, so it was when we were living there, at least, and uh, when we moved to to Sweden and tried to get uh, stuff down there, uh, we experienced uh, a new kind of support. And uh, everything went uh, better. We we managed to to fix a uh, rehearsal room and stuff that uh, sounds impossible to achieve in our country. And uh, I'm sorry to say that, but uh, it's true. When when you are starting, there is no such help and support. You you are for your own. Okay. Um, with Ada, your role in music started in uh, 1997. Um, yeah. How do you see the evolution of the band since the beginning? Uh, it's quite huge because when we started we were just playing the, this traditional kind of black metal inspired by the old Norwegian and classical stuff like uh, Merciful Fate, uh, King Bad. Celtic Frost, uh, Bathory and stuff like that and uh, after that we we grown tired uh, upon following the same circle and uh, we found ourselves in this kind of uh, pit where we didn't uh, get from there so uh, we establish some kind of black metal that uh, can grow without the limitations of the classical uh, ways of uh, thinking. Because uh, for most of the people inside the black metal culture, it is about, uh, how to say it, uh, uh, traditionalism. But for us it's uh, another synonym for stagnation. And we want to develop. We want to develop uh, further, and this is what we are doing now. Uh, I mean, there is no limits here. Uh, well, the sky is the limit. They say, it, but we say the mind if, is the limit. As long as we keep ourselves creative, there is no limitations, and uh, once again, the rules are made to be broken. Uh, can you talk now about uh, the artwork? of the last album, the signification of it, and who made it? Phosphorus? Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, I have the honor to illustrate the cover art this time, because sometimes he does cover art. And, uh, yeah, I'm very proud of that uh, illustration, but of course I see as an artist, I also always see things that I could have done better yeah, yeah. but the most important is that it I managed at least to show or to draw what I wanted to say uh, there is a lot that I say through that image but I like that people who see and the cover art 
tries to like wonder well, what the fuck is that? Why is that? So I, I like to create a bit of thinking, a thinking moment. But for me, the what it says is um, just what what it can exist in some plane, you know, in some spiritual plane. If if there are forms in another plane, for example, it would looks like very almost like it doesn't make sense for us, but for them it makes sense. It's like also can it depicts a bit of a spiritual breakthrough and of course uh, as an artist or striving uh, yeah, I could call me an artist I I always try to to draw what I see inside my head I I don't know I can see stuff and I like to draw it that's why I'm practicing so it looks better and better but it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit abstract it's a bit surrealist also Yes, that's true. Uh, Full, can you tell me uh, your current vision of the black metal scene? Okay, of the current black metal scene? Yeah. I think the bands are the standards of the musicianship in, is better now, I think. I think the bands, the musicians, are, the members are playing much better now. Uh, I heard some band from New Zealand uh, a few days ago that was very technical, or, and, but it was very unknown band, but they could master their instrument, they play very good. And I, I think it's more and more often that you see that bands are sounding better, of course, because of all, yeah, they are better equipment now, and they, they are doing good music some of them and a lot are copying each other's ideas so it's a lot of crap but it's a lot of uh, good quality so, okay. yeah uh, have you planned to uh, reissue a crimson table vision and a rex arena in cd or any other format well actually a crimson terrible vision is 20 years yeah. in december yeah. and we have uh, plans since a long time ago to to do like a like we did with flying across like a re recording and of course release it because uh, yeah we will we would like to do it we just like to celebrate anniversaries yeah concerning those albums we got the idea to remake them because uh, at that time we didn't have the um, the possibilities to make it as we wanted them to be. So uh, all the studio work and the recording process was like uh, unprepared and very amateurish. And the sound quality, well, is the result of that uh, insecurity. So, uh, well, the, those were the demos, I, uh, as, uh, I should say. So we are now re-recording them and releasing them as once again as I wanted them to be from the beginning with the right sound and the right uh, production. Okay. Uh, can you tell me uh, for finishing uh, your last words for who listeners? Uh, well, thank you for your interest and um, it was a pleasure for us to answer those questions. Thank you.